Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you learn how the following. First is to identify basic XAML data bindings. And minimize coupling between your UI and code behind to enable easy UI changes. Most applications are driven by data. It might be user-generated or downloaded from the internet. The data might be compiled directly into the app. Even games rely heavily on data for scores, leaderboards, account tokens, and so on. When your data changes, make sure that what's shown in the UI stays synchronized with what's stored in your code behind. What is data bindings? Data bindings connect properties of two objects, called the source and the target. In code, two steps are required. The binding context property of the target object must be set to the source object, and the set binding method, often used in conjunction with the binding class, must be called on the target object to bind a property of that object to a property of the source object. The target property must be a bindable property, which means that the target object must derive from bindable object. A property of label such as text is associated with the bindable property text property. In markup, you must also perform the same two steps that are required in code, except that the binding markup extension takes the place of the set binding call and the binding class. However, when you define data bindings in XAML, there are multiple ways to set the binding context of the target object. Sometimes it's set from the code behind file, sometimes using a static resource or X, static markup extension, and sometimes as the content of binding context property element tags. This is a very valuable tool, and while data bindings can be defined entirely in code, XAML provides shortcuts and convenience. Consequently, one of the most important markup extensions in Xamarin forms is binding. Data bindings allow properties of two objects to be linked so that a change in one causes a change in the other. This is a very valuable tool, and while data bindings can be defined entirely in code, XAML provides shortcuts and convenience. Consequently, one of the most important markup extensions in Xamarin Forms is binding. Now let's open our Visual Studio and do some binding. For this demonstration, I will be using the project that we've created where I discuss how to access XAML elements from code behind. So what we're going to do is to bind the property of a UI element like the text property of the label to the value property of the slider. So when the value of the slider changes, the text property of the label will automatically update. With this, we don't need to add an attribute for our slider element. This means we don't need also the event handler from our code behind. This framework is much cleaner and more maintainable. First, remove the value change attribute from the slider. Then delete the event handler from code behind. Now, we want to bind the rotation property of the label to the value property of the slider. Let's add an attribute called binding context to our label. We need to use special syntax for this. So far all the attribute values we've been using are all string based. At runtime, these string are converted into primitive data type or an object using a type converters. In case of data binding, we cannot convert a string value to a binding expression. That's why we need a special syntax. In XAML, it is called the XAML markup extension. Markup extension allows us to set element properties referenced indirectly from a different source. But for this demonstration, we are going to use a pre-created markup extension. Inside the quotation marks, insert an open and close curly bracket. This is to instruct that XAML parser that this is not a string literal, and it's a markup extension. So, let's type x colon reference, 
This one is an example of a pre-created markup extension. Next is to input the name of the object or element we would like to bind. In this case, we would like to bind the slider. But as of now, we don't set yet the identifier of the name for our slider. Now, go to the slider and set its name to my slider. Then, we go back to the binding context of the label and reference our slider. The label and the slider are now bound. What we would like to do is to rotate this label base on the slider's value. Remember that we remove the event handler from our slider. So instead of changing the rotation property of the label in code behind, we call its property in the XAML file. So let's add the rotation property. Since the slider and label are already bound, we can call its value property. So equal, then open and close curly brackets. Then type binding, then the name of the property we would like to get, which is value. We are also doing this to another label. In this case, what we are going to do is to bind the slider value to the text property of the label. So let's type in binding context, open and close curly brackets x, colon reference, then slider. Now it's bound, we can set the value of the text property of this label to the value of the slider. Now let's run the app. Now let's check its behavior. As you can see, we achieved the same output without accessing XAML element from code behind, which gives us a cleaner and more maintainable app. Let's another argument to the text property of this label. Inside this bracket, we could add another argument called string format. So let's type in string format, then a single quote. Type in, the angle is, then open and close curly bracket, then input 0. Which refers to the first argument of this expression, then f2 degrees. We use f2 to display a float value with two decimal places. We just added few words to make data more meaningful. Data binding is a powerful tool in Xamarin. But there are times we need to access XAML element from code behind. But for this simple app data binding is much recommended than using code behind. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone!